Okay, so hello everyone, welcome back. I hope all of you are doing well. Okay, so in this video, we will cover two problems. And the first one, and the first one is just a kinematics problem. So, so here we have a positively charged particle that enters a uniform electric field uh, with some initial velocity. We're neglecting gravity in order for the particle's velocity to change by 30 degrees in the shortest possible time. Okay, what is the angle between electric field direction and initial velocity direction? Okay, so essentially, uh, if this is the initial velocity vector, right, we need to rotate the velocity vector by 30 degrees. And we need to do this as fast as possible. Okay, if that is the case, what is the direction between electric field and initial velocity? Uh, so let's take the initial velocity along the x direction. Okay, something like this. And we will call this as u vector. Okay, so now we will we we need to rotate this velocity vector by 30 degrees. So let's say uh, this is that rotated velocity vector. Now the magnitude need not be the same as the original vector. So we'll just modify it a bit. So this angle is actually 30 degrees. Okay, and this is the final velocity vector. Okay, and we want to minimize the time it takes to rotate u by 30 degrees. Okay, so here the thing is, um, the electric field is uniform, which means the acceleration is going to be a constant vector. Uh, so in this case, this particular vector, which is v vector minus u vector, this is going to be the change in velocity vector. Um, and of course, acceleration will be parallel to delta v vector. And this is because acceleration is a constant vector in this case. So uh, let's say this is so this is the initial velocity vector after some time dt, the change in velocity will be a dt, right? And uh, this will be the new velocity vector. Similarly, after another dt time, we have another a dt being added and this will be the new velocity vector and so on. So because the acceleration is a constant vector, it, the small, small dVs will be always along this particular direction. Uh, and if you add up the dV vectors, you will get the delta V vector, okay? So acceleration, okay, so now also acceleration is constant. So I can say delta V's magnitude uh, is just acceleration into time. Okay, this is simply just a v vector equals u vector plus at vector. Okay, so essentially, uh, so far, we have determined that this side has a magnitude of at. So the thing is, um, the electric field is uniform and the particles charge is fixed, right? So acceleration will be a fixed, uh, acceleration will be fixed in this case. So if I want to minimize the time, then all I have to do is make this vector as short as possible, right? Because the length of that vector determines the time. So I want this vector to be as short as possible. Okay, and that of course happens when it is perpendicular. Okay, so this is when delta v vectors magnitude is minimum. Okay, it's just a simple geometrical fact. So we want this delta. So we want this delta v vector to be as short as possible. And that happens when um, it is perpendicular to this particular side. Okay, so which means v vector won't be this vector, it will be this particular vector. Okay, so let's complete the vector triangle. So now we can get rid of this arrow. Okay, so now the thing is, uh, we know this side length is acceleration into time. So this is the direction of the acceleration vector, this purple arrow's direction uh, is the acceleration's direction, which will also be the direction of the electric field, right? So we wanted the angle between electric field and uh, the initial velocity vector. Uh, so that would just be this particular angle. Uh, so this angle is 60 degrees. So this angle would be 120 degrees. So this will be the answer to this question. So for minimum possible time to rotate this vector by 30 degrees, the acceleration and velocity should be at an angle of 120 degree. Okay, so that's it for this question. So in this problem, we have two long straight parallel metal rails that are fixed so that may, they make an angle theta with the horizontal plane. And the distance between the rails is L. Okay, so this distance is L. The rails are connected by conducting wires to fix resistors R1 and R2. Uniform magnetic field passes perpendicularly through the plane of the rails uh, with the magnetic field intensity of B. A conducting rod AB of mass M is placed on the rails. Coefficient of kinetic friction is given to be mu. Resistance of the part of the circuit, uh, basically conducting rods resistance is R and uh, R1 and R2 are also equal to R. During the process in which the rod slides down along the rails from rest, it always remains perpendicular to the rails and in close contact with them. Okay, We need to find its final speed when the rod reaches its final speed 
uh the mechanical power dissipated by the entire apparatus is okay so uh, essentially they're saying the rod will attain a final speed which is a steady state speed uh, and in that condition what is the power dissipated by this entire circuit okay uh not circuit the entire apparatus okay and acceleration due to gravity is g the rails uh, the rails and the connecting wires have negligible resistance okay so yeah this is the diagram so essentially we um we have this inclined plane and this uh, rod is sliding down the inclined plane the magnetic field vector is perpendicular to the horizontal inclined plane okay so let's begin so this is the diagram of the situation so i'm let's take the, so let's say this is that particular rod the conducting rod uh, at some instant we'll assume some velocity v for the rod okay and the rod uh, and this conducting rod has a resistance of r Uh, and the magnetic field vector of course is perpendicular to the inclined plane okay so from the side view so from the side view this is how the situation looks like the velocity um, is actually v uh, and the magnetic field is perpendicular to the velocity vector now as this particular rod is moving in a magnetic field the free electrons present in the conducting rod will start moving okay and they will move because of the magnetic lorentz force um that will act on them okay so and uh, on the electron the force is in the direction of minus v cross b right so v cross b is uh, into the page uh, so minus v cross b is out of the page but we consider the direction opposite to the direction of electron flow as the direction of current so in this diagram the current will be into the page okay and we'll call that current as i and in the other diagram the basically the flow direction will be like this okay and the current is of course i now the thing is the moment uh, current reaches this particular in junction it will split along these two paths and both of them will be equal to i i by 2 itself because the resistances are identical for both the paths right so that is the uh, so that is how the circuit looks like so okay so now in this circuit the these two resistances are in parallel so their equivalent is r by 2 and add and it is in series with this capital r so effective resistance is 3 r by 2 and uh, the motional emf in this case we will is just going to be bbl right and uh, we can consider a cell that looks something like this and the emf of the cell we can consider it as bbl okay so the current in the circuit is going to be this emf the induced emf over the equivalent resistance which is 3r by 2 okay so 2e divided by 3r okay so now we have determined the current as a function of the speed okay and e is vbl so this will be 2 vbl divided by 3r okay so now we know the current has a function of the speed so now let's mark down the forces acting on this particular rod so we have mg sin theta acting downhill mg cos theta acting in this direction the normal force friction force and we also have the magnetic and and we also have the ampere force right this is a moving conductor uh, in an electric in a magnetic field so the the for a force of ibl acts on the rod uh, in the direction of i cross b so i is into the page right Uh, and b is uh, in this direction so if you do i cross b it will be in the uphill direction so the mag the ampere force will be in this direction which is i l b okay so we have i l b we have the friction force which is mu mg cos theta all right so this is mg cos theta this would be mg sin theta and this is the normal reaction right now the thing is uh, let's just say in steady state we need the steady state speed for the first question so we'll say uh, the steady state speed is some v not okay so uh, of course the steady state speed is simply when the net force on the body is zero so we can say sigma f is zero in this case uh, so we'll have mg sin theta equals mu mg cos theta plus i l b and i was equal to vbl 2 vbl divided by 3r so it will be 2 b square l square divided by 3r multiplied with v not so now we can just solve for v not so v not will be this particular value so uh, 3 mgr 2 b square l square times sin theta minus mu cos theta okay so that is the answer to this part the speed final speed right so now at this instant we want the mechanical power dissipated by the entire apparatus okay so now uh, as i mentioned apparatus so that includes the sliding rod and the resistances as well basically this conducting rod and the rest of the circuit so the power dissipated throughout 
this entire circuit is what they're asking. So under the total power dissipated by the circuit, we would have the power dissipated through the resistors. Okay, so these would be the three, um, they, we have three resistors in the question. So uh, the I square R through each of them. So that is what comes under this particular term. Uh, and the second term will be the power dissipated due to kinetic friction. So their sum is what the total mechanical energy or mechanical power dissipated in this particular case okay so one way is to just manually find out okay so manually find out uh, the power dissipated due to friction and the resistors or we can use uh, work energy theorems uh, so in order to find the power dissipated at this instant we can use the power form of the work energy theorem right or the differential form so yeah so according to that the power the net power due to all the external forces acting on the system uh, is is equal to the rate of change of kinetic energy which we can write it as k dot plus the heat dissipation term right okay so we can just use this uh, power theorem over here to find out the heat dissipation term okay so here first of all uh, as the rod has achieved steady state speed v naught the rate of change of kinetic energy this term would be zero right uh, because there is no change in kinetic energy uh, other than that what are the forces acting on the system so and uh, under the net power uh, we only need to include mg sin theta because magnetic field does no work uh, in total we have uh, of course magnetic field applies an ilb force right uh, but magnetic field also applies forces on the electrons that are moving on the rod in total it does no work on the system right so we don't have to include the work done or the power due to magnetic field here because it's zero. Now we can, we can include friction uh, on the left hand side, but for the question, uh, we need the mechanical power dissipated in the system. So that includes the power dissipated due to friction and power dissipated in the resistors. So we can include all of them in this Q dot term itself, right? So this Q dot uh, term here, we can say it includes the power due to friction power dissipated due to friction and the power dissipated in the resistors okay so uh, as it includes both the on the left hand side the only force that we need to consider is mg sin theta okay so the power due to mg sin theta so power due to any force is just f dot v right a constant force power so um, at this instant velocity is v naught so power due to mg sin theta is mg sin theta times v naught so the power dissipation term is just mg sin theta multiplied by v naught okay so we already have v naught so the answer will so the answer would be this particular expression okay so that is basically it um, for this question so mainly while applying the work energy theorem the main facts we use is that the net work done by magnetic field is zero so we don't have to include it here uh, and of course n and mg cos theta are perpendicular to v naught so they don't contribute any power and we will include mg sin theta and uh, we excluded the power due to kinetic friction okay and we just and we just considered it as the heat dissipation term okay so that's why we didn't include it on the left hand side um, if you considered it on the left hand side okay then in this q dot term you will only you will only have the power dissipated through the resistors okay so if they asked what is the uh, heat dissipated in the resistors at this instant uh, then the thing is you would just uh, you just have to consider the power due to kinetic friction in this term itself okay so that is basically it for this question um so if you guys have any doubts you can ask below uh, if you enjoyed the video make sure to like share and subscribe that's it thanks for watching